In this first video, we're going to build a very simple schedule, and um, as these videos go along, we'll go from simple to a little bit more complex and deep in, in the schedule. Schedule can get pretty deep at times. Uh, we're going to keep it simple to start with and then go a little bit deeper later. So I'm in a, I'm in a project management job, and I'm going to go to a project schedule here. When you first hit this, it's going to pop up and assume that you're going to want to enter some tasks. Um, now, you can apply a template here. We will get into that in later videos, um, so we won't do that right now, but um, I'm going to go ahead and start entering some tasks. So I'm going to make a very simple schedule of just having detailing, fabrication, shipping, and erection. So I'm going to go detailing as a task description. A parent task we we don't have any parent, any other parent task here because we have no other tasks in there yet. So we're going to go task type. We'll do this as a start end. Notice you can do a summary, um, or I could do a milestone here. These are pretty typical um, scheduling terminology um, that many of you are probably used to. Now here we've got options here to apply project breakdown. We can we can break detailing down by right now I've got it set it up for for sequence and lot. Now that can be um, adjusted in schedule settings. So right now I've got it done by sequence and then by lot. Just note that I could have more options here. I could go down to category, subcategory, if I wanted to even pay category. So right now I have it set up for sequence and lot, and that's the way we'll run it right now. So I'm going to say, yeah, let's do breakdown detailing by sequence and lot. Now you can, I can turn lot on, but I don't have to use. It. So in other words, if I'll have sequences on here. I'm just giving myself the ability to break down by sequence or lot here. I don't have to break down by either one of them, but I'm just giving myself the ability. And then apply breakdown leaks. So whenever we do a breakdown, and say we uh, put sequences in there, I can say that sequence one has to finish before sequence two will start. So that's a link there. Um, you, I don't have to apply those links on every task, but um, we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a, uh, the opportunity to do that here. Now, duration days and original estimated hours. You could enter this here if you would like. There are some advantages to that. I'm going to enter those on the Gantt chart to start with, and I'll show you how that works. I'm not going to fill these in right now. You can if you'd like, or you can leave them blank and fill in on the Gantt chart. So now status link. This is how you want the schedule to tell you when this particular task is completed or what percent completed is. So in other words, um, here um, it would make sense for detailing for me to say, let's let's show uh, percent complete of drawings approved. Now I don't have to do anything here, but I'm going to go ahead and do this here. I'm going to go ahead and do drawings approved and status summary method is how do I want it to calculate that. I'm going to do this one by quantity rather than by weight or duration. We'll do it by quantity here. I can also apply a resource to this. So if you have your own internal detailers and you want to do a schedule for them, then you can assign a resource. Now those resources um, are also a setup item. If I go maintenance, project management, and resources, I can assign a resource here to it or create new resources if I would like to. So for instance, I could, if I wanted to do have, have fabrication, the structural fabrication, then I had mis I wanted to plan miscellaneous fa fabrication. I could do new miscellaneous fabrication. We'll get into calendar later, but I'm going to apply calendar um, of standard to it. Default capacity, I've got 100 hours a day. And add, and then now I've got 500 hours per week due to my, due to my calendar. We'll get into that a little bit later. So you can you can easily add more resources. I'm gonna get rid of this latest fab right now. Just leave, leave it detailing, fabrication, and shipping. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna apply detailing resource to that. Now I could also assign this task to someone um, if I would like, and it would pop up in their in their task list. Um, and I'm not gonna do that here. So I'm gonna go add. 
and it's asking if I want to enter edit mode, and yes, I do. So before I start entering more, I just want to show you, I'm going to close these out, and I'm going to show you that it, I've scheduled tasks here on my uh, project schedule screen. I've got detailing in there, and when I go to the Gantt chart, I've, you can already see that the Gantt chart is starting to take form. Um, I could enter start and end date, so on and so forth, but it's already starting to take form. So let me, let me go ahead and keep on adding in. So there's detailing. I'm going to add in fabrication. Still no parent task. In other words, it's not going to be a sub subtask or a child task to, to detailing. Um, this is its own task. I'm going to leave it to start in. I'm going to break it down. Now, my status link here. Notice there's bunches of options here, and there's you do not have an opportunity to modify these. This is the ones you have to choose from. Material purchase, material received, take what's been taken from stock. Production progress, production completed is where I, is where I probably want to um, do this. Now, I could do station progress as well, pick a particular station. To track on this for this task, um, station progress. Um, so lots of options here, but I'm going to choose production progress here. Production progress. Think of it this way: if I had one piece on my project, and I had four stations that it's going to go through, production completed would be if I've completed two of the four stations, I'm still 0% complete. However, production progress, if I've completed two of the four, says I'm 50% complete. I prefer production progress, so if I've done some work, it'll tell me what work I've done and what percent complete I am. So status summary method, I'm going to do this one by weight. Um, then, so I want it to calculate my production progress, my percent complete by production progress um, via weight. And I'm going to Apply it to fabrication, and I'm going to add. All right. Now here, I also have the opportunity to link this back to detailing. So in other words, I'm going to do right here. So I'm still on fabrication. I could click on detailing and go back to it here, but I'm going to get a new predecessor link and say that I'm going to link from detailing, and detailing has to finish before fabrication can start. Now I could do also like, I could overlap them and say minus five days. I could say, put a five day gap in between maybe for scrubbing if you didn't have that in your detailing dates. Whatever you want to do. I'm gonna leave it at zero days just whenever detailing finishes, fabrication will start. So I'm gonna say that. Then we're gonna add in shipping. Go through this a little bit quicker now. Parent task, still none. Start in, I'm gonna break that down as well. I'm gonna change my status link to shipping completed. Notice I could do shipping by destination progress as well. So I'm gonna track it to the galvanizer instead. I'm gonna say shipping completed. Notice too there though, there are field progress ones as well. We'll get to that on the erection, but um, status summary method, I'm gonna do that by weight as well. I'm going to assign this a resource of shipping, and I'm going to add. I'm going to do a new predecessor link of fabrication here as well. Finish start. There we go. Um, you can see um, I'm going to do one more here. Let's go new. We're going to go to erection. Parent task, there is none. Start in. We're going to break it down. And here I could tie it to field stations if I wanted to, but I don't have any field stations set up, so I'm not going to tie this with anything. I'm just going to blank it out. All right, so resource, I don't have, um, we're summoning out erection, so I have no resource I'm going to assign to it, so I'm going to add that, and whoop, I accidentally double clicked, and now I'm going to say new predecessor link for the erection is going to be shipping, and we're going to add. So let's go see what we've got on the Gantt chart. So there's all my tasks set up on the Schedule Tasks tab. And now on the Gantt chart, you can see that I've got four tasks as well. Notice they're, <clears throat> they're all linked together. So fabrication is starting after detailing, shipping is starting after fab, erection is starting after shipping. I'm going to right-click here, scale this down. Uh, well, it's scaled to day right now. It's just... Um, I could scale that to week, I could scale that to month, but data seem to work better. We'll leave it at that for as we go through. 
So that's building um, simple schedule. I could uh, go ahead and fill in dates. We'll do that. We'll talk about these fields in uh, in another video. We'll stop this one here, and we'll come back in the next video and do our project breakdown. Put in some sequences.